All right, so yeah, you're, you're, you're coming out, coming into the world, you, you are an LSU Tiger, it seems, but you don't necessarily remember that early, so when, when do you start to remember, like, being conscious? Like, like who's oh, the this first player? player? Yeah. Like, Mason Katz and, like, wow. Ray Frimes and Mark Laird. Ray Frimes is, is a very, very good answer. For those unfamiliar, yeah. uh, all littered, uh, the SEC record books is a lot of Ray Frimes. Mm-hmm. Um, that's certainly a name you're not going to forget as well. But right. when you, uh, you know, at that age, too, you're not necessarily a, a hitter or, or a pitcher yet. So, yeah, I mean, do you remember going to, to the box and, and watching yeah. those games? Uh, I mean, like, during the summer, I went to all the camps that they offered for the little kids. Right. and. I remember they one of the years they made it to Omaha and I was in the outfield and like I stuck my hand over when they run around right. like and high five everybody like before they go to Omaha so I, I remember that pretty vividly. And we have been to the box. Mm-hmm. We went to the new box in 2014. Yeah, 14 regional for yeah. the regional I believe and that atmosphere. I mean it's just different. How many games do you go to, were you able to go to? I know you obviously have your own high school season, but how many games a year were you able to go to? So last year, I, I tried to go to every, like, skiing start in mm. the SEC at yeah. the box. So I made a few. Uh, I mean, as you get older, I mean, you have less time. Sure. So uh, definitely as a kid, I went more, um, but I don't really remember all of it. But last year, I probably went to – 15 to 20 games at the okay. box um and it the crowd is just you have to see it in person like I still don't think online does it justice mm-hmm. like I feel like you just have to be there in the surreal moment to really understand like what it's like let's talk about Paul yeah let's, <laughs> let's do some some skeins chat here because LSU has had a lot of great pitchers coming through right. um maybe you will will we'll, you know join that list at some point but Paul Skeens, I mean, it seemed to be, as you mentioned, like, you don't want to miss it. It's an event. And that's been true in the big leagues as well. Mm -hmm. When did you first hear about, like, I imagine that fall, you know, after he transfers, that's when scouts start talking about him and the industry saying, like, oh, wait, hold on. This is going to be something special in the spring. Do you remember kind of hearing about that, that fall before uh, Paul showed up? Or when do you you remember hearing about that? Yeah, so, like, I remember him transferring. And then, uh, I mean, I'm, like, five minutes from campus, so – they were doing like their fall inner squad scrimmages and I went there and he was like 98 to 100 and I'm like who? in the fall <laughs> I'm like who is this guy <laughs> and like <laughs> like I'd never heard about him before I thought he was a hitter to be honest and well he was he sort he of was, was. Yeah, yeah I know and then he goes up there blowing 100 so uh yeah. that's that was the first time I really heard about him and at that point you are obviously still a, I guess a junior or a yeah, sophomore, still a junior. Junior at that point. And you're kind of your your velocity is, is ticking up at that point too. Yeah. Is that about when you kind of start kind of realizing your potential as, as a as a pro prospect? Or was it was it earlier? Was it later than that? Uh th- as a pro prospect, probably a little later, more like this past summer, like yep. a year ago. because mm-hmm. uh, like that's when all the scouts start showing up at all the big events and all. Sure. But uh from like a velo standpoint, like I watched there, and he was, like, sitting 99 to 100, and I'm topping out at, like, 93. So, like, <laughs> I'm like, I got a little ways to go. You yes. do. You, yes. you, yes. One can get out to 93. And it you has certainly been done, can. You certainly has been can. done before. When was the moment, though, where, like, it went from I, – I would imagine there's kind of two different jumps, right? There's mm. I'm playing baseball because I love it. There's I'm playing baseball because I want to go play in college. And then there's I'm playing baseball because I want to play in the big leagues, right? Those are in, in some ways three different right. things. You did the first one, and then that was it. For I me. did the second one, <laughs> and not the third one. And you're gonna do all three, right? <laughs> so tell me about the first jump when it real when you realize that it, you are good enough, talented enough to play high level college baseball. Yeah. So freshman year was not it because I was super short. I was a late bloomer. I, probably weighed like 100 pounds soaking wet going into my freshman year. Uh, I was kept on the team because I threw strikes, and that's about it. And then um, I grew about eight eight to nine inches that summer. <laughs> that's probably hurt. Yeah, it, it wasn't great. A uh, few knee problems, but that's about it. That's so, so <laughs> unpleasant. Okay, so eight-inch growth it's spurt over summer. One year so, into sophomore year. Right. Let's talk clothes then. Oh, oh yeah. God. Shoes. So, how'd that go? Let's start with clothes. So basically, a closet wipeout. Uh, Good for the local goodwill. Yeah, no, <laughs> big day. Actually, you have actually. any younger siblings that we? I, could... I'm an only child. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good day. Tough. It's a good day to be the Bad Rouge yeah. Goodwill baby. They, they hit the jackpot. Uh, my mom took 
a few of my shirts that didn't fit, but like the pants and the shoes and the slides and every like the bathing suits. Google was like, weren't you just here two weeks ago? <laughs> yeah. You're just going Why back. Right, 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 right. Uh, did you, because, you know, eight inches is a lot. Yeah. Was, were there any clothes where like you <laughs> grew four, you bought some new clothes, you wore them for like two weeks, and then you grew another four and you took them back? I had a few pair of baseball pants that oh, were like, right. they were the high waters. <laughs> like I'd lift my leg to pitch and they're like up to my knee. So, uh, I mean, a few pair of baseball pants, but <laughs> did like. You, did you have any <laughs> pairs of shoes that you really liked and you're like, oh, damn, now these don't fit. Well, like <laughs> fun fact, I have been wearing the same gray New Balance for like the last six years. Not, like, not the same exact pair, just like oh, the same style. Whenever so we, I old, know. I just buy these. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, okay, so you've been wearing that same style for six years. Yeah. Do you have any other types of sneakers in your closet? Like you're like a cartoon I have turf character. Shoes. I have turf shoes. So just again, I'm <laughs> in cleats. You have shoes for on field. Yes. And if you're wearing sneakers to a non baseball <laughs> playing event, you are wearing those exact style of shoes. I actually wear these on the field too. On the field too. Yeah. Okay. And is like that during the game? During the game. Yes. Like, if you're not pitching. Well, no. I like my cleats are the same exact shoe, but they have the molds and the spikes <laughs> so on the bottom. Why, why are you so committed here? I don't know if this is a, I, a is it superstition or is it comfort? It's neither. It's just like I don't know. I don't even know if I have the taste or the will to go like, okay. shoe shopping. So there's some self awareness in there. You yeah. have this. There's some. Yeah. Like I like to keep it simple. I'm not trying to branch out, but not to this degree. This is really extreme. <laughs> and but I, but I kind of like that. Do you think you're going to be able to sustain that? Whether you go on to LSU now, you have all kinds of opportunities. People coming at you with all kinds of swag, or you get into pro ball. I, I mean, is the plan to keep this 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 up? I mean, I'll wear them until they tell me to take them all. Love so. it. <laughs> so one last shoe related inquiry oh yeah um <laughs> how long until you need a new pair like how dirty is mm. too dirty because i used to do something similar with white shoes where i would have a pair of bright whites a pair of everydays and a pair of beaters mm -hmm. right <laughs> and like the last is just for mowing the lawn or like yeah. you know the ones you're wearing now those seem like your everydays when will those become unwearable to you and you will have to buy a new pair from new balance yeah so i've been wearing these for probably Give them the looks. Probably a month or two. Okay. So they probably got two more months in them. Two more before, months. Three months before the, the flush. Before the, where, the rubber where have, starts flopping <laughs> off and the. Where have all right, the old pairs gone? But, do you have like a? <laughs> do you have just like a massive graveyard? I do. I do. Of the same shoe in ten different sizes. I probably I have probably three pair in my like shoe basket. Okay. In my bathroom. Because the other thing to remember, right, is so the soles are going to so, get worn down so much quicker yeah, because yeah. you and I are wearing. You know, like these shoes I'm wearing, also, That's I guess, true. no I, free ads, shout out to New Balance. <laughs> like these shoes okay, that I'm wearing, I wear these probably like three out of seven days. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, He's sorry. wearing them every <laughs> single day. And so their wear and tear is just going to be wild on them, on the soles. Um, I might have to get a pair of those now. I mean, it's working for him. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's, let's, let's try to pivot back to baseball, at least for a couple more questions. Then we'll, then we'll let you go. So... Something, of course, they say, oh, okay, he throws hard. He's got this, this awesome curveball. Something I'm really interested in in terms of the, the pitchers that are now coming up is you have just access to all this incredible technology and all the, the lingo about what it means to be a pitcher in the year 2024. Right, like where when I, you know, I graduated high school in 13, played college ball 14 to 17. We didn't know what spin rate yeah, was, but, let uh, alone like so, right, vertical yeah. break or none of it just wasn't words that existed yeah. in our minds. And so I'm curious, like, when did that terminology enter your brain? Like, is that something, has it just been part of it since you've kind of been a, a prospect and since guys are like, oh yeah, I know that that's a high spin rate and that's what <laughs> this movement means. Or, or do you just like, you're like, yeah, th that's their problem. I'm just yeah, up here uh, trying to chuck it. <laughs> so like my sophomore year, I went to like some event and I threw a curveball and they were like, throw that again. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, <laughs> I threw it again. And they're like, they're trying to show me and explain it. And I'm like. I don't know, dude. Like, as long as it gets out, so I don't really care what it spins at, uh, <laughs> to be honest. So, like, but like over the years, I've been, like, forced to, like, really learn, like, what it means and what right. all the dynamics mean uh, in my pitches. So, uh, I mean, I have a general understanding yeah. about it. Right. But, like, five years ago, uh, his yeah, vocab, yeah. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> yeah. if I copied and pasted you into baseball five years ago, the conversation would be, wow, William Schmidt is so far ahead of – the game because of all these things that he knows about pitching that he right. understands all these terminologies, but the game is just 
evolved so much so quickly that the goalposts are different now. Right. But also, you know, the one thing we've had velocity for a long time and like pitchers have known, I'm sure even in bullpens with radar guns, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm trying to hit 96. I'm trying to hit 97. That's like very, you know, mm -hmm. mainstream number. Now you see guys in, in off season bullpens with all these numbers and say, all right, now I'm going to try to rip one 3,100. I'm going to try to rip one 3,200. <laughs> yeah. Now for you, clearly it's, it's a gift. You're able to do that, but it sounds like you're not going in there being like, all right, let's, let's ramp this up. Let's ramp up the yeah. spin rate. Let's <laughs> not just ramp up the velocity. It sounds like that's not really as much of a concern. For you. Yeah, no, uh, as long as the pitch gets out, I don't, <laughs> Did, don't now, really care you, what it looks like. You mentioned that moment though, when they say, oh, hey, do that again, because yeah. we're on the rap soto, you just spun it differently. That, that pitch, though, what, do you remember the first time I was like, oh, I can break it off? Because no matter how long, I, how many times I try to snap it off, it's not going to spin the way you spin. That's, that's the case right. for most people. Is there an earliest memory of learning that pitch? Yeah, so probably my sophomore year, mm -hmm. like right before the season started, like before I was even committed anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, honestly, like that's probably one of the big reasons I, I like I did get to commit my sophomore years because of like all these these metrics and mm -hmm. these, these stats and dynamics about pitching now. Mm -hmm. So like, probably my sophomore year, I threw one. He said third again. I'm like, all right, I threw it again. He shows me the number, and I have no idea what it means. So like, yeah. But they so, tell you. Because yeah. part of it is, I mean, you have enormous hands. Yeah, they're they're yeah. super big. Yeah. Do those come in handy or hurt in any way? <laughs> like, is it hard to bowl? Come in handy. Is it hard to yes? <laughs> like bowling is hard. Yes, my thumb. I, I I don't even think I have a fat thumb, but my thumb is like always blistered after bowling, like on the sides of it. Because of just the, yes. the whole of the bowl, <laughs> the bowling ball. And that's yeah. also part of the growth spurt too, where it's yes, yeah, probably probably yeah. unpleasant. Wow. But yeah. that so that helps, right? You're, but but I would also imagine too. I mean, it, in terms of other pitches, is that something that you feel like? Because mm -hmm. you're learning too, like your grips are are literally changing all the time because your hands are growing, right? Like how how are you or or or, or not as right? Like one of the plus things about it is that like if I want to learn a new pitch, I could pick up a like I can naturally spin the ball, so I could just pick up a baseball and I could throw it, and there's good chances that like it would be good, like without even having any previous experience. Right. It's so like that. I'd say that's one of the biggest advantages. Right, like it's built in spin. Right, right. Yes. And what will be cool, you know, when you go to college and get into pro ball is you will then have people who can help you craft that, right? right? They're like, well, let's take this gift and help you throw four different pitches with a lead spin. Right. Um, so the last thing I want to ask you about is your high school team. Okay. Number one ranked team in the country. Correct. That is just inconceivable to me <laughs> as someone who grew up in, the, in playing high school in the Northeast, right? Like, how many kids on your team are committed to play D1 baseball off the top of your head? Eight or nine? Eight or nine. And and when you again <laughs> like to be fair, like I would I'd say there's a few sophomores and juniors that could commit like on the spot right now. Yeah. Right. Like, so there's just, more they're coming. Just waiting it out. Yeah. You're just talking about the seniors, right? right? That's the thing. So you're gonna have right. another another wave. So like that. shortstops committed to LSU, you got right. two guys committed to Louisiana, both postseason teams, right? These are not we're not talking like schlub programs here. We're talking legit, legit, legit. Right. When you're around a high school program that has so much talent, how does that impact your day-to-day? -day? I understand it's really your only understanding of high school baseball, right? You never right. played mediocre high school baseball. But being around that type of, an, of environment, like what did that do for you as a player? I mean, to be the best, like you gotta be around the best. So like, I'd say like being the best high school team in the country, like, I don't know, it was a lot easier to get better at baseball. Like, mm. everyone on the team really enjoyed doing it. There wasn't really anybody that brought the team down in any sort of way. Right. Um, just, like, a lot of good team chemistry. Uh, the senior class was super tight from, like, the previous years and, like, what had happened during those seasons. So, like, ultimately, I'd say, like, everything just happened to click at the right time in the right spot, and yeah. this team just – it was amazing. So, like, you know, I think back to my own crappy high school baseball experience, <laughs> and so much of it is – trying to get, and this is true in college, when you're older, trying to get the younger players who have less invested to care as much as you. Right. Because the seniors on any team will care more about it than the freshmen. Right. Because the clock is ticking. 100%. But I would imagine that for you, that was way easier to get these kids to care. Right. Because it's like, yo, we're the number one team in the country. Like, everyone's mm. going to go play college baseball. You better care, right? right. But, but to that point, that's, that's my kind of last question about that high school experience that is unique because you hear kind of college coaches talk about this when rankings become a thing that you're discussing. Like, 
did you did you feel pressure? Like, I mean, that's the kind of thing where it's a unique experience to have a high school team that is nationally ranked. There's only so many players that are going to have that opportunity. And especially in that situation, probably going out there expecting to literally win every single game. Right. I don't know how many games you lost this year. Two? Two. Two, two right. And I'm sure those games, I, I don't know if you want to talk about those, but I'm curious, like, what happens in those situations? I mean, I'm sure that's fun. You have all these amazing players. Was that challenging at times to, to be like, oh, no, we're expected to win every single game. We're expected to win the state championship and all those things. Yeah. Uh, but I, I would say our team was really good at using that as, like, fuel mm-hmm. instead of, like, playing, a, like, really, like, um, shy, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Uh, like, our two losses, we just ran into a good arm. Like, that's, yeah. all, that's all that happened. Like, yeah. can't, win, can't win them all, I guess. Uh, yeah. But, like, during the year, we knew that we had a chance at it. We knew we had, like, a super tough schedule, and our coach, like, preached us about, like, we're just get, like we don't care how many games we lose. We just want to win a state championship, and we know, like, if we just go day by day that everything will take care of itself. And spinning it forward to, you know, potentially starting your college career, starting Pro Bowl, what are you most excited about? Let's say we're starting our pro career. What are we most excited about um, as, as we, you know, start your pro career compared to your, your high school baseball career? No school and getting out the house. Mm. <laughs> getting out the getting house. Getting out of the house. Okay. Now, just because it's like you want to get out and get some exercise or you want to get away from your, your family? Well, uh, only child, right? So, <laughs> right. like, I have exactly. an only child. So, uh, <laughs> right. It's not like, you know, we don't have siblings to worry about. Right. So, you're just trying to, to get, get away. Yeah. I mean, all the attention is always on me. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like, tra- <laughs> trash night, that's you. Like, I can't. Dishes. Dishes, you. Like, can't tell little boy johnny to go do it because yeah. there is there isn't one so uh yeah. trash dishes mm-hmm. vacuuming mm-hmm. pressure washing it's all me i mean Love you it. might have to do that you know where you live as, as an adult right but i understand right, right, that right, it's right. it's that's more of a I'm that's an adult your trash yeah. dude. i'm choosing when to do the trash and when to clear the dishwasher that it'll be on you as opposed to being told yeah. Correct. Yes. all right well, well william yeah. schmidt we we appreciate your time uh best of luck with everything moving yeah. forward and I can't wait to see you wearing those shoes with spikes on them (laughs) on a major league mound one day. Appreciate it. Thank you all.